everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some sock blanks in sort of a beautiful random pattern, but then we're going to over dye that using some stencils and guar gum. These are double stranded sock blanks from Knit Picks. They are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and they're knit with two strands of yarn together. So that way, after we dye and unravel them, we'll have two matched skeins of yarn, which means that we have a blank canvas that we can do whatever we want to it and still have a matched pair of socks or similar in the end, and that makes it really, really fun. As we start pre-soaking our sock blanks, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Rachel Loosebrink. Rachel, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Now I'm gonna pre-soak these blanks for at least 30 minutes, so that way the yarn can be really well saturated. Uh, but I'm not gonna add acid to the pre-soak because we are gonna be dyeing these blanks in a step before we go ahead and do the stenciling on them. So what is guar gum and why am I gonna be using it? Guar gum is a thickening agent that's often used in baking and things like that, but we can use it for dyeing yarn because it'll turn a liquid dye into more of a paint. And when we use that on a blank, the colors won't spread out as far. They aren't gonna really wick through the fabric which means that we will be able to have sharper lines and therefore it works great for say stenciling uh, or some other kind of like detail hand painting kind of things you may want to do on yarn. I do have a few videos where I have compared using guar gum without using guar gum on sock blanks using stencils and so you can refer back to that if you want to see the comparison and how much you may want to use. I have found that guar gum can be a little challenging to mix up, so I'm going to use like my magic bullet to help blend things. The guar gum I'm using is food grade, and I've added one teaspoon of the guar gum into two cups of water. As I use my magic bullet blender to mix everything up, I want to comment on the fact that I am using my kitchen tools to make this mixture but then I am going to transfer it into a container, which will then become a dedicated dye container later on. And so I'm doing this before I set my kitchen up for dyeing today. Once I bring out the dyes, any tools and equipment those dyes touch will be dedicated for dyeing yarn and never again used for food prep. So I have it completely separate. But I found that it's a little hard to dissolve the guar gum, so I like having some kind of blender to do it. Two cups of the mixture is more than I probably need, uh, but I wanted to ha make plenty, because again, before I switch the kitchen over, and we may use it for a few different videos. But I wanna show you what the thickness is like. There's still a lot of air bubbles in there, but if I stick my finger in, it's sort of coated in liquid and it's not dripping off. And so that is a thickness that is good. This ratio of a half teaspoon of guar gum to one cup of water is one I've used in the past with great success. Now, this mixture does not keep for long periods of time, so I will want to try to use it within the next couple of days. Uh, but yeah, this will be plenty for today's project and some others. So as I've said, I'm now gonna transfer this Will it all fit in one? Yes, it'll all fit in one container. Into a takeout container, which will now become dedicated for dyeing yarn. And so, uh, so now I'm gonna go clean up my kitchen, get things ready to dye some yarn, and we'll start dyeing the blanks. One other thing I wanna note before we go and start dyeing our yarn is that it's important to pick the thickener that will work with the types of dyes you're using, and I would Google just to double check. But guar gum works great with acid dyes. However, I believe that fiber reactive dyes would react with the guar gum, so you would want to use a different kind of thickener if you're using fiber reactive dyes. Of course, I've never tried this myself, but this is something I believe that I read at some point, and so it's worth sharing, even if I'm not completely sure, just to double check your thickener uh, before your project. <laughs> In my four inch deep full-size catering steam pan, I have approximately eight cups of water. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar. Sometimes I get asked why I still use vinegar over citric acid, 
I like <laughs> being able to smell sometimes when my water has already had acid added to it, and it's what I'm used to. And so that's the main reason why I tend to use it more often. I squeezed out most of the water from the pre-soak, but I'm now gonna kind of open the blanks and we'll be scrunching them a bit here into the pan. Now, eventually when we go and stencil, we will be steam setting and wrapping it up and having it open nice and flat. But for this more sort of random portion of the project, uh, this is the way I'm going about it. And there might be differences between the two blanks, but that does not matter because as long as the blanks are double stranded, within one blank, you will get a matched set. So I just turned on my two burners and I'm gonna let things heat up. We have a reasonable amount of water in the pan. There's some areas where the yarn's a little bit above the surface, somewhere it's below, but I don't mind if the colors end up spreading out. So once things are hot, I'm gonna put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we'll start dyeing. Rachel likes cool tones. And the first color I'm gonna start with today is a beautiful blue. This is Alpine Blue from Derma Trading Company. And you'll notice how far this dye is starting to spread uh, in some areas where uh, the powder is hitting the water first, and that is okay. Uh, eventually, we might decide to like move the blank around, uh, but it's fun to start and just sort of see what the colors are doing at first. Off camera, I have what I like to call a yarn mop, which is a skein of yarn, in this case, it's Knit Picks Hawthorne which is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid, and I'm using it to wipe my gloves onto to sort of soak up any extra dye. I do want my fingers to be completely dry before I go into the next color. This color is Hyacinth, which is a beautiful, beautiful purple color, although sometimes it does feel like it disappears almost before uh, it starts to spread out. And I'm layering it up into the blue a little bit. I'm not using very much dye at all. It is okay if we have some speckles, but my goal is not to create something overly speckly here. Next up is Sea Spray, which is another color that breaks and is really, really lovely. So a lot of times in stock blanks, because there's like inherent resist from these stitches themselves, a lot of times you will see uh, like it, a sort of speckly mottled thing once it's unraveled. And you can either work directly from the sock blank and knit, sort of unravel as you go, or crochet or whatever uh, kind of project, or you can unravel it first and sort of go from there. Um, but ugh, that's so pretty. I think I want more of the Alpine Blue. Yeah, we'll bring in a little more blue. The sea spray is a color that is known to break, which means that like through its speckles, you can see multiple, whoop, that's a lot, different colors. And that is totally fine. The goal is not to get all over color coverage, but to just get some hints of color that will show through from our stenciling. And I think a little bit more high sense too. I'm just lightly taking little bits and sprinkling it on to get the kind of coverage that I would like. And I think I am satisfied with this first layer. I could have made things a little bit easier on myself by reducing the heat sooner, but I'm now going to reduce the heat to low. When things are really steamy, then the steam can collect in the gloves and make it hard to get the powders to fall. But I think I'm going to set a timer for, oh goodness, let's do 20 minutes. And then uh, we'll check in and cool off the blanks so we can do our stenciling. Let's see how we are doing. Oh, this is great. This is great. I'm not seeing any color left. So what I'm gonna do now is turn off the heat and I'm gonna remove the blanks and set them aside until they're cool enough so that way I can comfortably handle them. While that's heating up, I want to prepare our dye. 
So I have here half a cup of our guar gum mixture. And I'm gonna add approximately a quarter teaspoon of Dharma's blue steel and stir <laughs> to dissolve this. Now I have not done things this way in the past. In the past I've made a 1% stock solution uh, where you have one gram of dye in 100 milliliters of liquid. I've made that stock solution first and then diluted it some, but I'm not sure what it is, but part of me wanted to try having it a little bit thicker. Now, it's possible, let's just take a tiny dip of it. That's looking nice and dark. Okay, so I say it's possible that we may need to add some water to it, but it's easier to add water to it than it is to remove it. So I'm not gonna just place a cover on this. I know the spoon is still in there, but at least like it won't tip over. Uh, and we'll set it aside for when we're ready to start stenciling. For stencils, there are two options I'm considering today. One is this sort of curvy geometric pattern that I have used before on sock lengths. The other is this like lace pattern, which I think would just be fun because it looks like it's knit lace. <laughs> And I don't know, for some reason I want to try it. But these lines in here may be too thin to provide the resist that we need. So we're gonna try and we'll see what happens. <laughs> but that's the reason why we have two blanks. If I really mess one up, we have another one to try. I laid out some plastic wrap on the counter. These days, I don't use plastic wrap very often, but since we're gonna be doing a very specific pattern on here and we do not want the yarn to touch itself and to get smearing, therefore, uh, that's why we're gonna use plastic wrap to help protect the fabric uh, from itself and from the other dye. So here, interesting. I thought that there was a lot more of the sea spray color on it, but it looks like that we have um, a little bit less, but that's okay, it's still beautiful. Uh, it's just interesting. I love the marbling kind of effect you get. I'm curious, yeah, the other blank has a little bit more. But now I want to see, I'm planning on using the other stencil first. There we go, I'm just curious approximately how Okay, we should be able to get a few repeats. I think I'll start sort of in the middle. Again, I have no idea how well this will or will not work, but we're gonna give it a shot. We should know pretty quickly whether or not we need to adjust the thickness of the die. But now I am going to just start painting it on and I'm not smearing. I am dabbing because I want the dye to go through the holes, but I don't want to move the stencil at all if I can help it. And therefore I kept just dabbing with this thickness of dye on to our stencil, trying as hard as possible not to move it. I did remove as much water as possible from the blank before spreading it out, which should also help prevent the dye from spreading. All right, this is our moment of truth. We are gonna peel this up. And oh, look at that! So we definitely don't have any definition around these little stitch areas, but the pattern is still cute. Uh, it's very, very cute. And the thickness of the dye is working pretty well also. Now, I'm gonna try to use my yarn mop to remove some of this dye. There, I just sort of wiped it onto the mop. And now I'm gonna go rinse this and we're gonna reset the stencil to keep uh, going with this pattern because it's beautiful even if it is different from what I was expecting. And now as we are moving on to the next section, I tried to place the stencil carefully so that way it would be approximately lined up as best as I can with the first round. And we are going to stencil onto this area, go rinse off the stencil, and then finish the two little end areas.
And there we go. I actually really love it. Yes, there's a lot of area on the sides. In theory, I could take the stencil and try to do a border over on the sides as well. Ooh, should I do that? Probably, right? Ooh, I didn't even think about doing that. Hmm. You know what I'm gonna do instead of that? Oh dear, is this not gonna work very well? This is not gonna work as well as I thought. Um, okay, no, if I hold it down, then it will. I'm gonna color in some of these edges. And the reason why I'm opting to do this is just because I think that the other, that this will help have like a little bit more continuity. Um, it means that there isn't going to be like large patches uninterrupted by this color. Yes, it might still be speckled and we'll have still have some of that edge color, but I think that this will be prettier overall. Now, when I do the next stencil on the yarn, I don't think it'll be quite as obvious, uh, the edges, because um, over there, rather than having the design, like the design itself will be dark versus having sort of the design be the negative space. And I'm not worried about getting complete coverage here. I'm just trying to get a little bit. And again, I want to make sure not to rub because I don't want uh, the brush to stick. I don't want to like ruin the yarn at all. I did use most of the dye that we had partitioned for just this one blank. So I will probably mix up the same amount, I think, for the next one. But there. That's maybe not the prettiest looking border, but I think that it works better and it's feeling like it's feeling a little less empty to me because before it was just feeling like something didn't quite work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plastic wrap at the edge which you can barely see and fold it over and then I am going to carefully oh dear, fold the yarn over and roll it up. And you'll notice how little color there is on the other side. So we will probably have, when this unravels, a lot of almost like navy type speckles. But now I am gonna go and steam set this for at least 30 minutes and we'll start working on the other blank. I measured out another half cup of our guar gum mixture, added approximately a quarter teaspoon of the blued steel acid dye. Stirred everything up, laid out plastic wrap, spread out the sock blank, and started stenciling onto this other blank. Doing the same kind of rinse, well really first wipe with the yarn mop, then rinse before, before bringing it back, lining it up approximately, and continuing on with the pattern. I do have some other stencils that I'm curious to try at some point that rather than having a thin line where there should be no dye, there are some thin lines where the dye should go. So maybe those would work better, but I don't know. Once I was done stenciling on the pattern, I wrapped up the blank and steam set the blank for 30 minutes. And I also steam set the yarn mop for 30 minutes as well. The 30 minutes are up and ooh, the yarn mop is so pretty right now. Let me give you a better look got these bits of gray from the blued steel. I do think I'll be using this mop for another project that I'm working on today, but I'll try to show it at the end of this video and you can see what other colors I've added onto it. Um, but uh, as for our yarn, I am going to gently remove these jelly rolls, set them aside to cool so we can wash it and see how well our stencil patterns have held up. And here is our yarn mop after I used it in another project. Oh, it's so pretty. Now it is time to open up and wash these blanks. And to hope that the we don't have too much guar gum and it didn't cause any kind of problem. Because I suppose it is thicker. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is so cool looking. 
Uh, it is a bit thicker than normal, but I'm not feeling any texture differences in the yarn itself. On the plastic wrap, it's feeling a little slimy. That's, oh, that's so cool looking. That's sort of how the guar gum felt. So, yeah, I am excited. Now, the, what is it, the blue steel that we used, it is looking rather black. I'm curious if it's going to feel more blue once it dries. But that is something we won't know uh, for a bit. But, oh my goodness, how cool is that? Um, it is so pretty. The good news is I am not seeing any color bleeding right now, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and fill the basin up all the way. I think we'll rinse both of these blanks separately just to make sure we get all the guar gum out and I added a little bit of dish soap. Uh, I may end up washing the other blanks completely off camera, um, but for now I'm going to fill this up with water and I think I'll let it sit for about five minutes just to soak for a bit. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm not seeing, I don't think I'm seeing any bleeding at least. But the water did look a little cloudy. But given that we're trying to rinse out this guar gum, I don't think that that's a huge issue. So, oh, this is beautiful. Okay, I am going to fill the basin with water um, again and rinse out the soap. I am not feeling any like sliminess or texture or anything. There have been times I've used other uh, strange thickeners and things on yarn, and some of those have left a textural difference. But the Gore Gum historically has ripped out totally fine, even when I poured a lot in. The main thing is you don't want it to dry or solidify on, um, but otherwise it's fairly soluble. So I'm going to rinse this a few more times. Uh, put the yarn through my spin dryer, clean it up to dry, and I'm going to show you what the other blank looks like as we put it into water, and then we'll finish washing it off camera. I just want to know what this one looks like. This one has a lot less dye on it. I don't know yet what I'll do with the extra color, but oh, the sharpness of the lines. I like this. I've used this one before, this uh, stencil. Oh, look at those beautiful curls. But I really like the way that the lace one came out. I think that that's just such a fun thing. And ironically, in some ways, it was easier to do because like, it was easier to keep the stencil down. But, oh, this looks so cool, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. All right, I am going to do similar washing on this one like the last one. Spin dry or hang up to dry. And soon we'll look at the finished blanks. Okay, this is fun, right? I don't know why I don't do this more often because I always really enjoy looking at the results. I love seeing the picture, the pattern, and clearly you don't need to do something geometric. You could do something uh, like animals or whatever kind of stencil. You just really wanna make sure that the details aren't that fine. Here in the attempt at lace, uh, there are some areas where you can kind of see where those stitches were. Like in here, you can get a little hint of some of the stitches from the stencil. But otherwise, it's too easy for the brush to get around it. Maybe if you're using some kind of spray and kept the stencil really, really still, but an element that is that narrow is hard to get the resist of. Even with our other stencil in the center of these flowers, it is, we got some of the, the space, but in other places it did blend a little bit. However, these lines are very sharp. The dye pretty much stayed put exactly where we placed it and it didn't sort of spread out. And if we were stenciling, even just hand painting with a color that breaks, uh, then we would not see as much breaking because color breaking or separating happens when one color strikes faster and the other moves more. It's like chromatography, but on yarn. And so if when you place the tie down, it all stays in one place, then it's not gonna break in that kind of way. Of course, one downside to guar gum is getting coverage. It's a lot harder to spread the dye over the yarn because it doesn't wick through. You can't really push it through in the same kind of way. It's thick and it stays just where you put it and doesn't really move through. So 
If you are using it to hand paint onto a colorway, uh, you just really need to make sure that you're hitting all the strands and take care there. But speaking of the colors not moving a lot, we have a lot of that blued steel pigment on the front of our blanks and not very much on the back. Yes, you can see some where we were really able to push it through. But on the back here, we see more of the colors of the blanks that we dyed. So while it looks like there's going to be a ton, a ton of navy on here, uh, it's really going to end up being a little bit more speckled and splotched because as the blanks are unraveled, there's still going to be a lot of those background colors shining through. I am not going to be unraveling either of these blanks today. I have a lot of other videos that feature sock blanks and you can watch me unravel the yarn in some of those. However, I do offer a service for me to unravel blanks for you if you purchase a blank from the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And so I'm happy to unravel the blank for you into two 50 gram balls of yarn. It's just, I think part of the fun of a blank, especially one like this, is letting the person who's gonna knit or crochet with the yarn to get to do the unraveling themselves and to really see and feel that. Rachel Lisbrink, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and that you're gonna love your sock blank. I had a blast dyeing this and know that I want to do more of this in the future. I've said that before, but I'm, I still have other stencils I've never pulled out. I'm not sure how well all of them will work, but we should give it a try. So again, Rachel, thank you so much for being my lab partner. This yarn mop also made an appearance in another video, but I just wanted to show you all how it ended up. If you're a big fan of Chemnitz and want to help support the channel, uh, there are many ways to do that. You can find a lot of links down in the video description, but you can join to become a channel member and get access to uh, some custom Chemnitz emotes. One of my favorites is the Yarn Heart, although I also like the Do Not Stir one. <laughs> that is one that I uh, use for myself every once in a while. And you can also get member badges and other fun little perks. Um, so you can learn more about that on the Join button that is just underneath the video. Thank you so much for watching.